get my six. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid and whatever this channel's about. Today, it's about a hunting story. Because I'm actually hunting up here. Hunting, for those of you who are not from the South or Appalachia. Well, how's it going? Uh, about the same as usual. See, I went hunting the other day. Saw, let's see, I got, saw three rabbits and two squirrels. Hmm. Did they taste good? I don't know. Never ate them because I didn't kill them. Here's the problem with me and hunting, okay? <clears throat> I grew up hunting, always loved it, but it's meant like nothing even remotely similar to what it used to after having served in the military and gone to Iraq. And I was warned that would happen by other veterans who were there before me uh, who had grown up hunting. It's just not the same when you spend a year going somewhere where that which you're hunting is actually hunting you back and actually hunting you when you don't realize, you know, it just doesn't seem. So anyway, here's the deal. Um, I'm sitting up here. I'm also carving while I'm hunting. Let me show you my view. I'm in a different place. I'm way up here in the backyard. I'm just going to turn the, the, the phone slowly. I'm usually up there at the campground. That's a tent way up there. Um, but I like this angle. I like this view. Let's see. Was that my house? And my house is down there. And then I get to see our big front field. Don't make like a lot of videos at all down here. Um, and then we got this. This is where I planted all these wild flowers. And potentially I'm sitting here waiting for a mysterious visitor who has been known, at least according to the security camera we have on this bee box back here that's always aimed this way. It's been known to show up occasionally. All right, so this is my view. This is my angle. And I'm sitting up here, watch this. Whoa! All right, probably just lost monetization on this video for showing that. It's not a firearm. Let me tell you what that thing is. Let me get this camera sit back here. Um, that is a Remington 25 caliber pellet rifle. Yeah, I have that and I have a Remington 22 caliber uh, pellet rifle. Got them, I guess, three years or so ago now uh, to hunt small game. We're overloaded with rabbits, we're overloaded with squirrels. Here in the beautiful state of Virginia, uh, you're allowed to hunt small game such as that on your property year round and you don't even need a license. Now, FYI, um, first and foremost, the number one thing I was raised to understand into the core of my bone, bones, I have more than one, uh, is that uh, weapons, firearms, these things, uh, they are deadly and they are not to be treated like toys. I did not grow up having Nerf gun wars. Nerf gun wars. I'm, I'm getting way off tangent here, but this is one of the things. This, and I'm not blaming Nerf guns. I'm not blaming um, video games, but there's a lot of stuff out there that has kind of desensitized young people especially to the reality of the dangers of this type of thing. They're not toys. Just as I would never point this thing at an individual with intentions of pulling that trigger unless if I was in a combat uh, zone again and and then it's different there uh, or if if it was like a life threatening or family threatening my family situation that would just never happen even if it's a water gun even if it's a nerf gun because listen I was raised to believe and I do believe this as well that anybody who will point a toy gun at somebody would point a, point a real gun at somebody. And uh, so that's just my little um, little spiel there on the responsibility of this type of stuff. But a few years ago, I thought, you know, I used to really love that. They said it would never be the same. I should get some of those. Uh, maybe I thought about a firearm. Um, but here's the deal. We do have neighbors. They're far away. I mean, they're not close, but... You don't have to be so close to get hit with a stray bullet. So with these air rifles, let's say I'm aiming over that way and I shoot at a rabbit or a squirrel or something. 
or a you know a can a target um if it goes through the target because these things the velocity it'll blow your mind uh it's not going to carry all the way to a neighbor's house if the neighbor's out you know doing yard work or sitting there in his or her yard enjoying the beautiful you know day it's not going to hurt them because it's not going to go that far so that's why i made that choice uh sighted these things in and man are they accurate and, and me and two of my buddies uh and, and i'm gonna get to the story i have a hunting story for you this isn't it it's part of it um man we were hitting cans from 100 yards away with these things we had to do you know they call it kentucky windage i call it appalachistanian windage uh it was amazing so here's how my hunting expeditions go these days i'm gonna tell you a quick story i'm gonna tell you about my hunting when i saw three rabbits and two squirrels i've seen one squirrel already while i'm sitting here carving i don't know take a sip of this like like surrounding temperature surrounding environment temperature coffee it's like 79 today it's beautiful so i'm sitting up here Here's what I'm working on. My basswood finally came in. It's not hollow. It's So I'm trying to make, yeah, this was just a, a chunk, you know, a stick. So I'm working on like a snowman, but he's going to be a pumpkin man. And then this is really neat. Let me show you this. <clears throat> this is what I do. I sit up here with my 25 caliber or my 22 caliber Remington, sit here and carve, watch for a small game that I never shoot. Listen, I was going to tell you, but look at this. Made this one yesterday. This is a jack corn. Do you know the history? Do you know the story behind the jack corn? Yeah, jack lantern made out of acorns. Let me tell you the history of this one in like 30 seconds or less. It literally started out as a piece of firewood. This is the part it came from. This pine from, it, we'd burn pine just at our campground because as you know, it doesn't put out much heat. It, the resin will clog up your chimney if you're not careful. So I have a bandsaw that's only got about a five inch height on it. So I split this in half with the ax, took it into the bandsaw, cut off the end, making sure not to get the pith. So I had a chunk of pine like this that would go on to become this guy. And no, you can't buy him from our Etsy store, even though the link's in the description box below. This guy's mine. His name's Jack, and he's going to sit with me this October as I tell you guys all the amazing, really awesome upcoming stories from October Nights Part 2, 31 more tales for the Halloween season. And that first October night, you're going to learn the history of the Jack Corn. Yeah, I can give you a spoiler. I can give you a hint. It goes back to the Puritan days. Uh, actually, a, a mountain community similar to the one i live in here uh, in the blue ridge mountains of virginia uh you know back then there was no internet there was no cable people actually got together to socialize and they would have festivals well they they loved to celebrate fall halloween was their favorite holiday uh, because they had the big bumper harvests and and all these things well but they were puritans and this was during the puritan era this is back when they were burning women for being accused of being witches because some other girl liked their husband so they'd say hey she's a witch and they'd burn her at the stake and then she'd move in on the the widower you know same era so this this bible beaten tyrant just came to this community to demand an end uh, of all things halloween this this wicked evil of the devil celebration would no longer be celebrated if he had his way well, he had a difficult time getting the folks to stop, and he even went as far. I'm telling you too much of the story right now. You're supposed to be waiting until October 1st, but he actually outlawed pumpkins. People weren't allowed to grow pumpkins or gourds because they figured, well, they can't have jack-o'-lanterns. How can you have Halloween? Well, you can make jack-o'-lanterns out of pine firewood, as you see, that look like acorns. You can make them out of acorns. You can make them out of anything. And that's all I'm going to give you until October 1st, so come back then. Okay, for the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, you're gonna love it. Uh, dude found out you can't stop Halloween, huh? Come back October 1, you're gonna hear about that. But here's my favorite thing I made the other day. You know why? This is from a little piece of basswood, um, it was from half of one of these, and this is in my private collection. All this stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this, and I'm keeping this stuff. I found out a good way to cover up poor carving ability is paint. 
So anyway, I was carving these little pumpkins because I'm making myself a little pumpkin patch. And my son was like, that looks so boring. He walks by, that looks so boring. I'm like, well, but it's kind of therapeutic. And I mentioned this in a video the other day about how I love it so much because when I'm doing it, excuse me, when I'm doing it, it's all I'm thinking about. And for a crazy guy like me, whose mind is always going a million miles an hour, uh, it's nice to be able to just only focus on what it is I'm doing. It's like meditation. It's like carving for me is like meditation. It like stops the insanity, at least while I'm doing it. But anyway, um, my son came back later and I was finished with it and I was getting ready to paint it. And he's like, wow, he says, that looks like fun. I said, it is fun. He says, can I help? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'm, I, I'm like, man, I'm not going to hide my kid, my little flex cut carving knife, not sponsored. This is a detail knife. So I said, you know what, buddy? I carved it out. How about you paint it? You just, cause I had the acrylic paints there. And, uh, so he painted it and I sat there with him and that was yesterday. And that, so this is the most special piece yet we have. Uh, but speaking of the, the Etsy stuff, just to let you know, you have until as of this recording, it's Sunday evening, you have like 24 hours. We are putting the Etsy store on pause, uh, not the entire store for the entire summer, but uh, at least for a month, maybe longer. Um, Dearly's probably not gonna be shipping out Lumpia for three months. So if you want that, okay, her peanuts have already sold out and I think she's got seven orders of Lumpia she's made up this weekend that's in the freezer. Um, seven left, you've got 24 hours, seven of you or one of you who's really hungry, to get those seven orders of Lumpia, they will ship out on Tuesday and then that's it. We're done with that for the summer. So you got 24 hours. He wanted me to point that out to you. There's a little bird back here. Whoa. I just gotta make sure I stay even. If I turn and look that way, my old spine cracks a few times. I gotta make sure to crack it this way too. So here, here's how my hunting goes. Um, it's actually two hunting stories for you. Uh, Okay, I will be honest. That first year, I just used my foot to hold that. That first year I got these sighted them in, um, I actually did dispatch some small game. Now, if you've been on this channel for a long time, you know a couple of things. Uh, I, I said we were never gonna hunt here, or I said we didn't hunt here and we didn't allow other people to hunt here as well. Well, the other thing you know is that I'm a very honest person and I, I'm not gonna say I can't lie, but I've just, they say honesty is a good policy. I think it's pretty much the only one. So yeah, I harvested a couple of squirrels, a couple of rabbits that first year, but it just didn't, it's like, man, I'd rather just sit here when I'm carving and watch them in the fields and watch them running up and down the trees. Uh, the first squirrel, it was a 40 yard shot. And I also was raised to never maim an animal. If you don't have a kill shot, you don't take the shot. So I thought, well, I got to hit it in the head. And I, I am very s s talented with rifles. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I was a machine gunner in Iraq. I was a rifleman in our unit. Um, I can shoot. I hit what I aim for. The best form of gun control, in my opinion, you can have. While knowing you don't aim at other people, unless you're in a combat zone situation or a life-threatening situation, okay? None of this whatever i'm not even gonna get into that psychos I tell you mental health in this country is out of control it is out of control and what do they do with people who have some issues usually just throw them in prison yeah or show up shoot them you know when they get a call because somebody's having a mental health crisis it's disgusting it's 2022 whatever um so this squirrel was 40 yards away. I had this thing sighted in. I, I shoot a dime at 25 yards. And, and to me, sighted in means I can hit that dime three times in a row from 25 yards. So I figure, well, let's aim for the head and 40 yard shot just is like, is amazing. These, these pellet rifles, and I'm not, this isn't sponsored by Remington and I'm not pushing them. I'm just telling you, man, they, they're really, if you want to get into small game hunting or, or you know, whatever, um, but it just, it, I was like, man, I don't, we don't need this. Now, if we ever needed it, you better believe I'd bring it out here and get it. So here, here's the, the, uh, 
my hunting these days, well, yesterday, day before, whatever it was, this row I showed you where this mysterious visitor comes from time to time. That's a mockingbird. And then up here, the, the upper trail that goes up to our campground, I've actually nicknamed this Rabbit Alley because there's so many rabbits. So I'm walking down there. I got this pellet rifle and I look over and just five feet away, there's a rabbit. Well, it's one of the ones that was born out here underneath this big pine stump actually where where this thing came from, where this guy came from. Isn't that neat? This is what I love about this too. So that tree was probably a hundred years old or more. It was 80 feet tall. It was huge, century old. Okay, it fell now, it's dead. Most of it will be burned as firewood. Um, but this part of it will live on forever inside our home, inside the house that it provided shade for for a century. That's that's wonderful. And this guy is just the first of many to come, okay? This jack corn. There's going to be a lot of jack corns coming up. So I'm there. I got my pellet rifle, and I see that bunny, and I'm like, aren't you one of them ones that was born over there underneath that big old root ball of that pine tree there about six weeks or so ago, maybe two months or so ago? It stands up on its hind leg and it's sniffing around looking at me. I said, well, okay, why? Well, I, I can't eat you, I know you, you know? So I let that one go. And then I go on down through there a little ways and there's another one runs out. And I'm like, well, hmm. Starting to think about maybe that one would taste good. Dearly, dearly, when I did this a couple years ago, she made squirrel adobo and she made rabbit adobo. It was delicious. I mean, my mouth is watering thinking about it. But we got plenty of chicken and all that, you know. God, she made pork rib adobo the other day. Oh my gosh, it's to die for. So anyway, this one rabbit runs around, starts playing with the other rabbit. I'm like, well, that's his buddy. Just Long story short, I get back, back in, you know. Come into the house, got the pellet rifle, no meat. Daryl's like, see anything? And I'd walked around, saw some squirrels. I said, yeah, I saw three rabbits and couple squirrels and she's like well were they too far away i was like no nah, one rabbit was like five feet away and she's like well, why didn't you shoot it and i'm like it was because it's too cute i mean it's one of the ones that was born up here in the in the stump you know while i'm sitting out here either on the back porch or up here in the field you know doing my carving i'd like to just watch them and if i ate it i mean i wouldn't be able to watch it the next time i'm out here doing this stuff you know and that, so i go hunting all the time on my property do i hunt on my property yes I just don't kill anything. I sit there and have conversations with it. There was a gray squirrel here a little bit ago I was talking to because we have a mulberry tree right here in front of me. Man, this thing gets so many mulberries and we never eat, we never get to eat any of them because the squirrels go up there and eat them all before they even ripen. These are supposed to be purple. These got, there's some wind here today and these blew off. This squirrel was 10 feet away and I'm sitting there carving, talking to the squirrel. And I'm like, you see, I got my pellet rifle right there. And the squirrel's like eating the mulberry. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what I could do to you with that thing? It's like, man, this guy knows I'm not going to do that. It nested all winter in a tree right outside the window of my office where I write my really awesome books, which you can get on Etsy at least for the next 24 hours or so with an autograph sent to you. Uh, links in the description box below. Man, it's like... Well, I was going to say it's like my neighbor. Could, well, whatever. That was going to be a very dark joke. It's like a neighbor I like. Okay? <laughs> Couldn't do it. So I was sitting there watching him eat all those, those mulberries while I'm sitting here carving this pumpkin snowman. So, but here's the, the, the hunting story I really wanted to tell you. Because I had no... It's crazy. I was going to say I had no idea what to talk about to make a video today. And I actually wasn't going to make one. Um... And now I'm 19 minutes and 19 seconds into this. I haven't even talked about what I want to talk about yet. Um, but dearly wanted me to come out here and say, you need to tell people they have 24 hours to buy my lumpia. I got seven orders left. I'm like, okay. But, you know, I was just uh, sitting here and singing about hunting. Hunting, if you're not from the south or Appalachia. And... Uh, I just, I mean, I was going back. I went back a lot of years, and here's the story. So, I was out hunting one time in West, by God, Virginia. Uh, and yes, we wear shoes. 
Well, it's funny I say that. Sometimes. Um, and I was in the woods and I heard a gunshot. And it was close. It was probably 50 yards away. So I walk over in the direction of the, of the gunshot. And it was deer season. And I knew where I was. I knew the area well. And I knew most of the other people that hunted up there. So I go over and I see these two guys. And I know them. And uh, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to say any names. Okay. There's these two guys. This one's an old man. And one was really about my age that I am now. I'm 48. He was probably 48 or so at the time. The other guy was about 60 or something. And I just saw the white belly of a deer, you know? They were standing over top of this deer. I said, hey, you guys got one, huh? And they turn around, they look up, and, 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 and I go, I'm coming to see it. And so I had to come down the hill to get to them. There was like a decline, and it dipped down to where there was this, this, was this other hill. And then you go down that hill, and there was a flat part right there where they were. So I go down into that dip, and so there for maybe 45 seconds, they couldn't see me. I couldn't see them. Uh, come back up, get back down there. There is no deer anywhere. There's no deer within sight. And they were like, hey. I was like, hey. I was like, where'd that deer go? I'm looking around. They said, what deer? I said, I heard the shot. And I was standing up there on top of the hill. And I looked down. I saw, you know, the belly. I saw you had a deer. Where'd it go? And they're like, nah, we didn't kill a deer. There's no deer. crazy i thought i was hearing like screams or howls coming from the forest so there was no deer there and i thought man you talk about crazy i must be crazy and i was only like 14 or 15 at the time i guess i've been crazy my whole life um so anyway i was like okay talked to him for a couple of minutes because i knew him uh i guess they didn't quite know me as well as i thought they did so i went on my way well about three years later uh I would come to know both of them much better and I was camping one time with them up on that mountain and we were just talking about hunting and the older of those two men said to me he goes I got a hunting story for you and I said what tell me he goes you know so and so here pointing to the other guy he says he killed a doe one time and we almost got caught because it was buck season couldn't kill does that time of year it was illegal it wasn't doe season it wasn't private property. It was national forest, so it was federal land. They're like, 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 I can kill a squirrel or a rabbit right here, right now, no problems. I go into the national forest and do that. I've committed a felony, right? Because that's poaching. Big difference. Got no, got no rules and got no laws, and it's too easy to go along to get along. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like this. I said, well, how'd that happen? He said, well, this guy, you know, the guy with him, the younger guy, says, we were out there and he just had buck fever because he'd never killed a deer. I guess the guy had not grown up hunting. He was not, you know, th that much of an outdoorsman, but he was getting into it. Uh, the older guy was his uncle. So he says, yeah, we was out there. And he says, I saw this big fat doe coming along. She passed me and went up around the hill where this guy was. And he thought, he thought, Lord, I hope he doesn't kill that, that doe. He's so excited. Everything he's seeing move in the woods is looking like a buck to him. He's going to shoot it. That's called buck fever. And that can be dangerous. That's, that happens a lot. You know, this is a true story. Um, I know this from something I read the other day. 100 people a year get killed in hunting accidents in the United States. Sometimes I don't think it's an accident, but most times it is. People, they, they see what they want to see. They're like, oh, where's, where's the deer? Oh, well, there's a the deer. Well, no, it's another hunter who was too stupid to wear blaze orange during hunting season, deer season. So anyway, um, he says, yeah, he goes, so that doe goes on around the hill there. Next thing I know, I hear a shot. And I think, oh, my gosh, he done went and killed that doe. He says, so I go around the corner there, up there around the corner. And sure enough, that doe's laying there dead. I walk up to him. He says, what am I going to do? He says, I, I killed a doe. He go, and I, he says, I, well, I told him, he says, don't worry. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. Let's dress it up, clean it up, drag her home. And, uh, yeah, just don't ever tell anybody. Let's keep this between us. One of those things would take to the grave. Well, and then they said about that time they heard some kid yelling, oh, y'all got one, did you? And, 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 and so they turned around, they looked up, and they saw this kid. And I was like, wow, really? And they said, yeah. And he said, he starts coming down the hill. Says So says there was a dip right there. Coming down from his hill, there was a dip. 
He had to, then you come up on another hill, then you come down to the flat. He says, when that kid started coming down that hill, I told my nephew here, he says, as soon as he disappears in that dip, he says, you grab one front leg, I'm grabbing the other, and we're going to run this deer as far as we can for about 20 seconds. He says, there's a bunch of boulders out there. We're going to put it behind that boulder, then we're going to run right back here and stand here like we never left. And they were watching that kid, and the uh, kid goes down in the dip, so they grab that deer, and they take off running, and they throw it around over behind the rocks, and then they run back. So they got there just as that kid comes up comes down and uh and 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 he says and that kid he was just looking around for that deer just a looking and a looking saying i know y'all shot a deer i heard a gunshot and i saw it from up on the hill up there where did it go and so we just stood there and said no we didn't ever kill no deer we never killed no deer and uh he said that kid just looked and looked never saw the deer and that kid finally just left man he probably thought he was crazy but man they were gaslighting that kid back before Anybody knew what gaslighting was? Well, actually, that goes back a long way. That goes back to, actually, the term comes from a short story written by Henry James. Not one of my favorite authors. He's considered one of the greatest, but I think he was just too wordy. He went on too long. I read Turn of the Screw and a bunch of his other stuff. Um, one page, literally one page, would be one sentence. And grammatically, it's correct. You go through there to edit, it is correctly written. But whatever. Uh, so they said, yeah, that kid went on around the hill there. He never knew. And he says to me, he says, nobody until this day, except you now and me and him knew, knows about that deer. He says he, he never did it again. He got that out of his system. He's only killed bucks and buck season. Now only kills don't. He's, he's the only time he ever did it. And he says, and you're the only one that knows about it other than us. And I said, well, it's a daggone good thing. I'm the one you actually told that story to. Uh, so now I can guarantee you that you two and, and me are the only three people who will ever know this story. No one else will ever know about it. And uh, he said, well, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's why we don't mind telling you. We can tell you're trustworthy. We trust you. And I said, well, that's not the reason I was thinking it's a good thing you told me. And they were like, why is it a good thing we told you? What's so special about us telling you this story? I said, that kid, that was me. True story. And they were like, what? We thought that was so-and-so, and they named this other kid I used to hang out with back then. I was like, no, that was me. I saw you guys. I heard the gunshot. I came over. I saw that deer with my own eyes. When I got down there, it was gone. And uh, and they laughed. After they after they had that old crap moment, like, they laughed and laughed, and then I laughed and laughed, and I said, I am so glad you guys told me this story because for the last three years, I've thought I was crazy. Now I've thought that for the last 48. So, with that said, make sure you're back here on October 1. Dang it. Make sure you're back here on October 1 to find out the story, the history of the Jack Corn and all kinds of other really cool stuff. Give you a view here. Set up here and keep carving and not dispatching any small game whether I see it or not. See you all next time for more.